Welcome back. Having learned about stack navigation, it's time to switch gears and explore another essential navigator, which is the drawer navigator. Similar to how stack navigator stacks screens one over the other, drawer navigator introduces a hidden menu sliding from either side of the screen. It is particularly beneficial in apps with multiple main sections that require a neat and organized navigation structure. Let's understand better with code. First, we have to install the Draw Navigator package in our project. I will follow the documentation for this installation to make it easier for you to track. In the React Navigation docs, under Navigator, click on Draw. Here, scroll down and copy the installation command. Within the project, paste the command npm install at react navigation slash drawer. Next, you need to install and configure the libraries that are required by the drawer navigator. That would be React Native Gesture Handler and React Native Reanimated. Copy the command and paste it in the terminal. Now, rename app.js to appstack.js to separate the code from the previous tutorials. Within the project folder, create a new file, app.js, and import React Native Gesture Handler. Make sure it's at the top and there is nothing else before it. In the next line, Import navigation container from React Navigation slash native. Next, import create drawer navigator from React Navigation slash drawer. Invoke it and create a drawer navigation instance that we can work with. Now, there is one step missing from the docs. If you browse the docs for reanimated package, you will come across this step two where we need to add the Babel plugin. So copy the plugins array, open babel.config.js in the project, paste it after presets and remove the three dots. In step three, they also recommend we clear the cache before starting the app. Let's add this hyphen C option in package.json to start the script. So expose start dash C. Our installation and setup step is now complete. Next, within app.js, create a React component and default export the same. Add the navigation container within the app component. And inside navigation container, invoke drawer.navigator. As children to drawer.navigator, invoke drawer.screen. Invoke the component once for each screen you wish to include in the drawer menu. Let's define two screens. In the screens folder, Create a dashboard screen.js and a settings screen.js. This component will render just a title, so I will paste the code to save the time. So, dashboard screen, which renders the text dashboard screen with some styling. Paste the same and replace all occurrences of dashboard with settings. Back in app.js, on each drawer.screen component, we specify a name prop, which is the label on our drawer. Dashboard and settings. We will also add a component prop to which we assign the individual screen. Dashboard screen, which gets auto imported, and settings screen, which is also auto imported. 
we can now restart our server. npm start. Press I to run the app on iOS simulator and A to run on Android emulator. If the app is still not working, press R to restart the application. On the devices, we can now see an icon to toggle the drawer. A swipe from the left edge also reveals our drawer. From the drawer menu, we can navigate to the dashboard and settings screen. In each screen, the name prop is displayed as the screen title, settings, and dashboard which correspond to the name prop. Now it's also possible to toggle the drawer programmatically. In dashboard screen, import button component, destructure the navigation prop, and add a button with title set to toggle drawer, and on press, we call Navigation dot toggle drawer. Head back to the devices. And we see we are able to open the drawer using the button. Along similar lines, you can use the jump to method on navigation prop to navigate programmatically without the drawer UI. So duplicate, change the title to settings and we call the jump to method passing in settings. If we head back to the devices, click on settings, we are navigated to the settings screen and it is set as the active item in the drawer. The drawer navigation is pretty straightforward as you can see. In the next video, let's take a look at some of the options we can specify on the drawer navigator. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.